Welcome to Civic Education. In this session, we are going to look at uh, decentralization and the reason for, for it. Then we'll look at uh, the laws of uh, chiefs in a uh, government or development of the country and the challenges that they face. So reasons for the 1980 decentralization were number one, to reduce the delays in most decisions could be made on the spot instead of referring to headquarters. So what is this decentralization? It's uh, giving power to the local uh, authority or people uh, at the grassroots, giving them uh, power to decide rather than waiting for a decision to come from who, uh, above or from the headquarters. So the reasons why, why uh, decentralization was uh, coined or they wanted to implement is to reduce the delays in most decisions that are supposed to be made. Maybe you have an emergency, you can't decide, you have to refer to Rusaka. So decentralization provides a mechanism for people at the grassroots or lower level to make decisions. Uh, next, make plans and programs more relevant to local needs and conditions. Uh, you cannot decide on behalf of the people. So uh, decisions that are made at local level are supposed to be in line with it, the needs and conditions of the people. You find some areas, they are hot and um, uh, they, they, they rarely receive rainfall. So the project that you are going to, to do there, you cannot do a project that uh, will not support uh, the, the weather condition or environment. So in such areas, you find people rearing maybe animals and uh, the mines can be uh, a success than taking agriculture to that uh, area. Uh, improve coordination between different government agencies in the area. Reduce burden of senior staff at national level in order to improve their performance. So imagine you have to make all the decisions from across the country. That is a burden. Then the district council administration was aided by the district executive secretary, supported by secretaries. So in 1991, another decentralization act was amended and it introduced three types of local councils. These were city. So we have city councils in the country, municipal councils, district councils. Town clerks and mayors are found in city and municipal councils. So in Lusaka, that is a city council. Uh, in Ndola, it's a city council. So the head of uh, these councils, local government, is the mayor. Okay, the town clerk and uh, the mayor. And uh, councils, while well, council secretary and council chairpersons are found in district councils. So uh, cha council chairperson now uh, in a district, we, call, we don't call them mayor. We call them council chairpersons. So this has continued, has continued to present. The MMD government wanted to give more powers to the councils so that uh, there was less dependence on central government for funds. And this made the councils to operate free without interference from political uh, parties, from political parties. So what are the functions of the council? So this question uh, mostly uh, comes if they want to bring a topic on governance functions of local councils, providing clean and safe water. So it's the responsibility of the council to provide clean and safe water. Then providing accommodation and plots for development. You heard that council, councils had uh, houses across the country, which were sold cheaply at ten kwacha during Chiruva's time. So they, 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 it's their function to provide accommodation. So they were building houses and renting out uh, them to uh, the the citizens, the local people, maintaining the environment. Uh, we have issues to do with keep Zambia clean, so it's one of their responsibilities. Collecting levies, they collect uh, monies from the market shops and and so forth on daily basis and the annual yearly basis. Making bylaws, so a city council like Rusaka City Council, they can make some bylaws which are not in Kaputa depending on the conditions. 
providing education facilities and control epidemics such as cholera. They are involved in managing and uh, preventing cholera by collection of garbage waste material from markets and residential areas. Uh, initially, the councils had the responsibility to to run educational facilities like preschools and nurseries. Okay, even primary schools. At one time, they they, they fell under this uh, local government ministry. And uh, some two years ago, people were contemplating of taking health facilities and uh, schools to back to local councils. Then awarding trading licenses to people. If you want to open a grocery shop, you go and get a trade permit, trade license. Sewage disposal, okay, They if you have a problem, they will come and uh, uh, maintain or manage your sewer pipe, pipes, providing street lights, uh, then maintaining street roads. You see women uh, sweeping every morning. Those are employed by the council to maintain the streets and roads. Maintaining graveyards, when, when someone dies, you go and apply for a burial permit from the council and they maintain the grave sites. Controlling livestock movement. People are involved in livestock business. They pay money to council for transporting uh, animals from goats, uh, sheep, uh, pigs, from wherever they are getting them from to the marketplace. Constructing and maintaining markets. It's a responsibility of the council to construct. So they con construct shelters, markets across the country. Then uh, town planning. You can't start building without a, a building plan from the council. So it's their responsibility because they will demolish that structure. Okay, providing recreational facilities such as swimming pools, parks, playing parks. Okay, they provide these, uh, more especially in the city councils. So these are the functions of the uh, councils. So the roles of traditional leaders in governance. We have what we call House of Chiefs, which acts as a forum, more like a parliament for traditional leaders to participate in governance. So there are third chiefs in House of Chiefs. Each of the ten provinces elects three chiefs that represent them in the house. So term of uh, these elected chiefs is three years, but a member can be reacted for a second term for three years after which he is not allowed to be reacted. The House of Chief, the the house, the, the house elects the chairperson and vice chairperson from among the members. So the clerk of the house and other staff carry out administrative duties of these House of uh, Chiefs. So functions of House of Chiefs include discuss bills affecting customs and tradition. Politicians they have a tendency of making laws that may uh, infringe on the tradition and customs of the people. So the chiefs will discuss and advise, debate, pass matters on matters concerning customary laws and customs, allowing plots under customary law, allocating plots under customary law, participating in development project in the area to discuss and decide many other matters referred to by the president for uh, advice. Submit resolution of the house to the president who in turn submits to the national assembly. The problems that they face. Uh, it has no real influence or issues on governance and development, plays in significant role as the resolution uh, to be debated upon the National Assembly. Chiefs are not allowed to join political parties like members of parliament. So those are the challenges that they face. Thank you so much. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at uh, citizenship.